Joining me is Drew Conway, data scientist and entrepreneur. Thanks for joining us, Drew. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. We've used your Venn diagram in the course. Can you talk a little bit about this, this kind of vexing question of what is data science exactly? Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think it's a question that, um, you know, we're still trying to figure out the answer to even as the discipline has become more professionalized over even the last five years. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, thinking about the Venn diagram as a kind of baseline, you know, part of what I was trying to do in, uh, in making the Venn diagram and, and, and attempting to define data science was to say this is inherently an interdisciplinary discipline. It said that, you know, the pursuit of understanding and extracting value from data for the purposes of a business or a organization is something that inherently requires many different skill sets. Um, so to me, data science is really a, a kind of a, a more of a process um, and, a, and a teaming function rather than a, a single role, right? In the same way that, um, you know, various other sciences or other endeavors have many different features to it, so does the pursuit of data science. And so if we think about the Venn diagram, there are these sort of constituent parts that are very common in the practice, things like understanding how to, how to work with, um, you know, uh, data, right? Having some technical uh, competence and expertise in working with large scale data processing systems. Then of course, there is the math and statistics knowledge that you need to be able to actually model and make some predictions, some classification, some forecast. And then I think the, the part, and even, you know, again, as we think about the original Venn diagram and things that people have talked about since then, really the, the focus on having some expertise in the business problem or the area that you want to apply this technology and this um, machine, you know, this statistics to is really important, both because it's where you get your questions from and, and what are the things that you actually want to investigate or where your hypotheses come from for the business. Um, and then also, how do you interpret the results? Because um, getting data and <clears throat> applying technology to that data has become easier and easier in, you know, the almost 10 years since the Venn you know, since we first published the Venn diagram. Um, but what hasn't gotten easier is actually asking good questions and interpreting the results. And so that, that to me is still the biggest challenge. And how do you think a generalist makes themselves a strong collaborator for their data science resource? Well, I think it's probably not that different than most other kind of team functions in an organization. You know, if you're, um, if you're someone who lacks the you know technical skills or the um, you know the statistics training, uh, I think it's important that you try to have some basic you know numeracy or statistical literacy because you have to be on a team. You have to understand what the you know essentially what the conversations are, why certain decisions are being made. But there may be many other things that you can bring to that group that are going to be really really valuable. In fact, one of the most most valuable things that I have seen in my career are people who can take, you know, complex, the, the application of complex um, methodologies or tools to a problem and then be able to actually um, articulate the results to a non-expert audience, right? So if you're working in an industry that is say not particularly data-driven, you know, you're working, you know, say traditionally, you're working in media, you're working in fashion or, or, or something. And, you want to do a statistical analysis, you want to apply data science to that business, it can be very difficult to articulate the results of that as to a senior leader of the management team who for their 20, 30 year career has never thought about their business in that context. You having someone who's actually good at doing that and, and is, is a generalist in a sense of like, they know enough about the tools, the, the techniques and the technology that went into that and can express that to a decision maker, that can be just as valuable or even more valuable than to the technologists and data scientists who are doing the work. And the, the topic of our course is, is agile and the, and the intersection of that with, with data science and analytics. Can you talk a little bit about the, both the significance, if any, and, the, and the, what's hard about doing data science and analytics in small batches as, as we do in agile, small evidence-based batches? Sure. It's, um, <clears throat> again, I think it's a, a part of the discipline that is very much a work in progress, certainly from what I've seen. Um, and, 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 and for good reason, I think partially because of the natural interdisciplinary nature of doing data science, you often find yourselves, and I, I find myself in this situation today and I've many times before, 
where I am, you know, managing a group, uh, a team of folks who have <clears throat> very different sets of backgrounds. So some portion of the team are software engineers and are, you know, sort of have a baked in viewpoint on agile and, and how you would organize and, and size work and then decide on a week or two week basis what you want to get done. And then, you know, to folks who are more business analysts who may be able to operate in that viewpoint, but don't have the software engineering background. To folks who are, you know, physics PhDs who just came out of a, a postdoc and are used to the six to 12 month development cycle of a research paper and having to think, you know, have, having to design a, you know, have a research design that fits into that cadence. So as is often the case, I mean, I think the thing that ends up working is figuring out what part of the tools fit into a kind of compromised practice that allows for the for the best outcome. So, you know, as a case that I've seen be really successful um, in, in a couple of different places is you can use the kind of formulation and organizational structure of agile in a sense where you have, you know, a Kanban board where you have a, um, a backlog of things that you want to be able to test. You have a set of things that you want to kind of prioritize and articulate in more detail. And then I think the critical component in a piece that data science really benefits from in borrowing from Agile is saying, okay, if you have some big research project, some large ambiguous thing, you know, your boss has said, build a predictive model for, you know, the how, how you know, understand our business and churn within our business in a way that we've, you know, from, from all the data that we have, no further instruction than that. Big part of the challenge there is breaking that problem down. You have to break that problem. That is a fundamental challenge of doing any of this work and does not require any technical knowledge per se. But you do need to be able to say, what are the pieces of this that I want to be able to go after first? Do I first need to identify the data sources? Once I've identified the data sources, are there any alternative data or third party data that I need to bring in that will add value? What is my hypothesis or what do I, th what, you know, effectively, what is my dependent variable? What is the thing that I'm, I'm tr tracking the change on? And once you've gone through and done all that, well, you've actually gone through a process of breaking things out into something that may fit pretty well into that kind of, you know, three different, you know, stages of development cycle. We can organize these things in a kind of agile way. The ultimately the biggest challenge, there's two big challenges after that. I think. One is how long do you work on something before you give up, before you say, I can't, you know, I can't do this. In, a, in data science, we often find ourselves in a kind of quasi or fully R&D capacity, you know, we're, we're hypothesis driven. And so those hypotheses, <coughs> excuse me, can be wrong. All right. So the question is, have you, do you have enough experience or have you done enough where you know when to say either we've done this for two weeks and we haven't gotten anywhere and therefore we pull a plug or in the better case, although sometimes harder to do is what are, what are my metrics going into this that I'm going to measure as a result to know that I've been successful? You know, in, in a business case that may be easy, you know that you want to be able to uh, identify X number of population in your data set. And if you hit that number, good, we did it. In other cases, it may not be, again, where it's this sort of ambiguous new idea that no one's really tested before. And that ultimately just comes down to having good management. You have to be able to kind of pull the reins in and um, and not allow people to kind of go off on these rabbit holes. And sometimes that does require some coaching. That is a terrific perspective on both Agile and the practice of data scientists. Thanks, Drew. You're welcome.